Well, today, Lesotho witnessed the swearing-in of the new Prime Minister, this Dr. Mwiketzi Majoro. This after embattled Prime Minister Tom Tabani stepped down under pressure. The 80-year-old former Prime Minister and his young wife, that's Mesia, who is half his age, are prime suspects in a murder trial, while the pair are accused of the 2017 murder of Tabani's ex-wife. For more on this story, we're joined by Professor Roger Southall from the Department of uh, Sociology. Thank you so much uh, for your time, Roger. I want to just start off with uh, perhaps what this uh, swearing-in of Dr. Mwiketsi Majora represents uh, for Lesotho. Well, possibly uh, a bit of a new start. It's been a long-running uh, soap opera, this uh, departure of Tom Tabani, um, and it has really been uh, stalemating Lesotho's politics for the last uh, year, basically. Um, now there's a possibility of the government being able to concentrate on uh, the emergency of COVID and dealing with other development issues. What we don't know is how long the government uh, will last, whether it will manage to hang on for its full term to uh, 2022 or whether it might collapse before then. We don't know. Uh, Lesotho's politics are always very fractious and uh, very complicated. And we were reading in reports that the government uh, had been quoted as saying they've decided or they had decided to give uh, Tabani a more dignified exit. But it begs the question, what took Tabani so long to eventually let go of that power? Well, I think the general feeling is that uh, he didn't want to let go because he wanted a guarantee of immunity from prosecution in the, uh, in the murder trial. And uh, the information seems to be that he didn't get it and that uh, at the end of the day, he lost the battle. Um, he was wanting to stay on till July the 31st, give him uh, some health, some more time to get that guarantee. But as far as I uh, gather, that he hasn't got that guarantee and we sh should, in theory, be seeing him standing or being charged with um, a conspiracy to assist the murder and then standing trial at some point in the future. Yeah. Uh, we saw the murder trial, of course, so the, 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 the um, rather charges being laid against him as well as his wife. But also we saw those political tensions in Lesotho, uh, Prof, just uh, in a couple of weeks ago, whereby, of course, Tabani had deployed those soldiers in various communities. This he said to restore order. But do, do you think that helped his cause at all? It further heightened uh, more calls for him to be removed. I'm sorry, I missed that a little bit. I wanted to ask uh, in terms of the political tensions that we've been seeing in the past couple of weeks. I'm sure you've read uh, or seen in the media whereby uh, soldiers had been deployed in various parts of Lesotho. This Taban is saying that uh, it was to restore order. And hence, we've even seen with South Africa having the special envoy there led by uh, Jeff Khadebe having there to try and ease down those tensions. Do you think this heightened uh, more of the calls to have Tabani removed? Yes, I think it certainly did, because uh, during that process, when the army was on the streets, they tried to arrest uh, the police commissioner and uh, a couple of other senior police officers um, who had been uh, trying to make sure that Tabani was charged. Um, and I think that it's at that point that South Africa got really concerned that we might see another military intervention or, or, or something close to it. Um, and I think the, the worry always is in Lesotho that the military will intervene on the side of one political party or another. So now it's going to be interesting to see how the military reacts. I mean, I, I don't see anything like a coup because I think South Africa and SADC these days have laid down the law to the military. But we could see over the next year or two some form of military engagement in the politics. It's, it's always... It's, very, it's proved very difficult over the years to neutralize the Lesotho army. Mm. And that mm. remains a continuing problem. What about the style and leadership then of Dr. Mwegetsi Major? I mean, what can we expect from his type of administration? Well, uh, from what I gather, he seems to have a reputation as uh, a, 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 he's been a competent um, Minister of Finance. And hopefully we'll, we will see him appointing people uh, who can actually do their jobs and are not uh, buoyed up with this constant uh, competition between two w wings of the ruling party, the ABC. Um, but I think the 
we have still got to wait for Tom Tabani to be actually removed from the leadership of the ABC. So I think it's going to be quite difficult for him to actually set a firm, uh, the government on a firm footing un until that issue is resolved. Tom right. Tabani seems to be hanging on to that for the moment. We'll leave it there. Thank you so much, <laughs> Professor Rancho Southall from the Department of Sociology for just giving us your uh, perspective on what's been happening in Lesotho. We know that at this point, the swearing-in of Dr. Mwekeze Majoro in Lesotho has taken place.